Welcome back to Tribe Talk. We are here for the Game Week 10 preview. Uh, and obviously, we'll take a look at the Game Week 9, uh, how it went for the two of us uh, making his debut, uh, Avin Sharma, uh, with his team name Organic Farming. How are you doing, Avin? Yeah, good, man, Anuj. Uh, thanks for having me. All good. All right. Uh, it was, I think it was an, I would say it was an aberration of a kind of a game week, looking at the score lines on, in a few matches. Uh, only three clean sheets, 40 goals scored, uh, which has been the highest for this season. Uh, I would love to kind of go back into a you know, couple of uh, seasons in the past and I would want to really want to see whether 40 goals, uh, where do they really stand in terms of the number of uh, goals scored in the game weeks in, in, in the history. 18 double-digit hauls. Uh, I think 10 or 11 were from midfielders. Uh, there were cup. There were four from I think defenders, and the rest were from strikers. It's it's just uh, just unreal kind of a game week. Three hat tricks uh, from Mount, uh, Mr. King, and obviously uh, the Egyptian King Salah. So so it was it was a crazy game week. Uh, uh, just a just a fun fact. Now I think. Uh, Liverpool's FPL points scored by Liverpool uh, till date in this season has been, I think, around 609 on 610. And I think Salah has scored 17.5%, uh, which is almost one-fifth of the team FPL point, which is just just unheard of. Uh, how, how, how did you find the game week? Uh, it was just crazy, right? Very crazy. I was surprised that the overall uh, uh, score this week was actually less than 70, about 65 I did better than the average, uh, but still, uh, in my private leagues, uh, you know, still dropped uh, red, or, red arrow all over. Uh, was lucky to have uh, Captain Salah. Uh, right. But, yeah, I mean, people who didn't captain him uh, got really burnt uh, this week. I think it was uh, it was a week uh, which was definitely weird. We had just had, like, two clean sheets out of 20 possible clean sheets this week. Yeah. Uh, obviously, 40 goals. Uh, I don't know. We, we won't find too many... Uh, too many, too many weeks, uh, such as what we just witnessed. Absolutely. Uh, so your your overall overall rank is one hundred and ten uh, thousand uh, thereabouts. Uh, and just just a minute on uh, you know whether you, whether you use your wild card or what's what's the plan on that front? Not yet, Anuj. I have, uh, I'm still holding on to my wild card. Uh, mm -hmm. I had been uh, improving my rank uh, pretty much every week for the last five weeks. Things were pretty okay. Uh, captaincy calls were good. Uh, this week is the first week. I think in the last five, I've actually dropped overall. But it's not that right. bad, uh, considering uh, the relative performance with other key players in the private league and overall. I'm still holding on to the wild card. There's no need um, for major surgery. There are a couple of uh, players I would want to uh, switch out, um, get one or two players from the teams that I don't have, like Chelsea. I don't have a Chelsea player. Obviously, obviously I missed out. Uh, right. you know, having a part in those seven goals, uh, but I think that can be done by taking a hit or two at at max over the next two three weeks. But after twelfth uh, or thirteenth week, we see a big fixture swing, and um, I, I I just want to navigate the next uh, three four game weeks without too much of damage, and then right. probably the wild card will come in handy, um, and then I can get a head up uh, on on others. So that's what I'm uh, hoping to do, and uh, so no wild card plans at least for the next two three weeks. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, I think you would be. I think eighty-five to eighty-six percent of the managers have used their wild card, uh, first wild card, obviously, uh, which has to be used before nineteenth game week. Yeah. So it'll be interesting. Your so your next three four game weeks are going to be critical in terms of planning because, and I think without using a wild card, hundred ten thousand kind of a rank has been. I think it's it's. You're, it's you're not that bad. It's not that bad. Yeah. I don't remember I a season I'm, at least in the last yeah. four or five seasons. I think I have always. Uh, used my wild card in the first five game weeks. This is the first season. I don't remember when it was the last. Uh, you know, getting into game week ten, and I'm still feeling pretty okay. So yeah, so far so right. good. That's awesome. Uh, let's quickly get into the game week nine fixtures. Uh, with, uh, obviously, there was an early kickoff. Not early kickoff. It was a Friday kickoff, late night kickoff. Uh, Arsenal versus Aston Villa. Arsenal is being your team. Uh, uh, what, what did you make of this game? Home day, home game. I expected them to win. Uh, uh, three one seems to be the the most common Arsenal scoreline I've been seeing for the last few seasons. I don't know <laughs> why, but we end up scoring three and always end up conceding one. 
but i think we had the game in control aston villa probably could have played better uh, mm. it was uh, good to see uh, you know esr get another double digit haul uh, i think he's going to become a key player uh, as we as we move forward uh, uh, saka uh, blanked from a fpl perspective a lot of people are hoping that he would also get something but uh, right. good to see oba and uh, esr uh, getting points uh, clean sheet would have been better a lot of uh, white and ramsdale uh, owners uh, they missed out but all in all a good performance from the team uh, well well in control uh, again at home we were expected to win this uh, but i didn't expect that it will be uh, with a two goal margin so that that was a positive right right yeah i think aston villa is, uh, is 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 no muck uh, you know as a team and they have done they have i think improved quite a bit in the last four five game weeks uh, i was expecting it to be a, a a closer game i was i had i think i had drawn i had predicted somewhere that it will be a draw uh, obviously not a not a goalless draw but yes uh, it's really that arsenal doesn't score at home but uh, yeah so i think it's very interesting when arsenal is some kind of a form now uh, obviously they had a easier run in the last 3 4 game weeks and uh, i think if we see the fixtures they are this this is still all right uh, they all right uh, like somewhere, somewhere in the middle in fact one interesting thing about this game also anuj was uh, uh, you know i think arsenal had more than 20 shots about 10 on target uh, they dominated mm-hmm. as far as the shots were concerned i think possession was still 50 50 so it was not only about uh, controlling the midfield but also creating good enough chances so that's a positive right. i think arteta with the fact that you know we don't have uh, you know any european distraction this year uh he's kind of got his 11 uh, pretty set on at this point in time unless of course there's there are injuries i don't think he's going to change too much and we could see that confidence building slowly slowly so each each and every game over the last four five games uh we have we've been seeing more attacking intent uh there's a little more more cohesive they are playing as a as a cohesive unit so you can see that uh, the team is you know kind of gelling obviously two right. Half games in the next four. Uh, Leicester is going to be a little tricky. Then we have, uh, uh, I think we we play Liverpool. Watford home, Watford home, and then Liverpool away, then Newcastle home. So the home games, I think, look pretty pretty tasty. Very very enticing. Very very enticing. I'll cover that a little later. Uh, yeah. What, yeah. What have we done? But Liverpool and Leicester are a little tricky. I think those two games, uh, even if you don't win, uh, get a draw or two here and there. But I think it'll it'll go a long way in showing. Uh, how much a team probably has matured uh, playing 9 10 games together so we'll, we'll we'll wait and see correct 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 no anyways i think i just said you you will you will be covering arsenal as a team uh, in the later half of the show uh chelsea versus norwich city uh, you know after lukaku's injury obviously everybody got uh, not everybody uh, but i think most i would say it would it was a knee jerk reaction to get havertz in because obviously havertz was a clear cut choice for the striker uh the reason i didn't get him in was primarily because of one reason that he he was short of match practice yeah uh, and i think it showed it showed uh, in his uh, though he didn't have too many options but but having said that it was really bad luck for people who got him in and 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 made him the captain so you know seven goals scored obviously one was an own goal so six goals scored not even a single return and i think he was the only player from chelsea squad who didn't have any kind of return absolutely, uh, absolutely. really Very unfortunate uh, not seen Very not seen this kind of a, this kind of a phenomena before in fpl no absolutely and uh, not many not too many people actually punted on mount as well right uh, last couple yeah. of game weeks uh, he hadn't scored uh, in fact last 3 4 game weeks i think he just had uh, one point uh, in the last 3 out of the 4 game week he didn't play in one so it wasn't as uh clear cut as uh habits was right so if you had to punt on one or two attacking players uh, mount wasn't uh, the one and he was the one who ended up giving the maximum point so yeah for people who had him uh, you know great uh, great punt but habits was a, was a very very bad luck yeah no, just a word on mount actually uh, obviously it was very obvious that uh, he he gave a 24 point uh, haul and uh, seven point he was at 7.5 i think now he's at 7.6 i'm not sure uh obviously it was expected that people are going to you know get him in the team and obviously his price has risen but to be honest if you look at his performance uh and you know, just to give an idea about his season now he's at three goals three assists obviously he had three goals and one assist in the in the previous game in this Norwich game uh he has been he i think he was injured for some time 
though he has started quite a few games uh, and i think now against norwich it was was the one that he started full fledged only after the red card so obviously he had a, a goal and an assist uh, before the red card happened and i think they were already 4-0 5-0 down norwich yeah. and then then a red card came in and i think his next two goals came after that so i to be honest i would uh, personally uh, personally saying that i will not read too much into uh, his hat trick uh, it's not this it was an aberration uh, obviously everybody any any hat trick can be an aberration but having said that havertz people with havertz i think should kind of hold him uh, hold on to him because i think he had a good game at carabao cup he could have had a brace as well uh, and he's a, and and these guys are you know these these guys are professional players uh, they will have one game off and they'll definitely come back and start kicking in no i, I agreed uh, mount as i said last couple of weeks uh, he played a total of 50 minutes nobody expected him to do what he did uh and and they were playing norwich norwich uh, is bottom of the table as far as uh, you know points yeah. and expected goals conceded uh they've been in a really really bad shape so i don't think irrespective of the red card uh, you'll get too many easy opponents uh mount had a, a great game but i don't expect him to continue with the same form uh, week in week out havertz until until the time lukaku comes back uh, you know he should get on the score sheet sooner or later and they right. have right. run a run of fixtures next three as well so people who have already got him in there's absolutely no need to panic uh, yeah. i don't think people who haven't yet uh, uh, have him in the team i don't i am not sure whether they would want to uh, get him now or look at other jersey assets uh, that's something that uh, is, is a point to ponder but uh, for people who have him uh, you know stick around i think next three game weeks he he'll probably end up giving a decent decent haul yeah and he's i think 8.1 so he's not that uh, cheap as well uh and and i think chelsea play uh, newcastle away and burnley home if i'm not wrong in the next couple of games so obviously those are uh, tasty fixtures so so yeah so i think it's 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 uh, people who have him should hold on to him that okay. that's that would be the uh, key ideas or in any ways people who got havertz in didn't just get him for norwich i'm sure they would have got him for like three four game game weeks uh, fixture uh crystal palace newcastle nothing much to talk about benteke was on fire uh, you know he scored one wilson scored a worldy again i think he had a bicycle uh, kick goal uh, otherwise it was i would say crystal palace was a bit unlucky uh, not not to get three points uh, i think the upset of the game week was uh, watford <laughs> defeating everton one of the surprise results of the week uh, for sure and the margin as well right so uh you expect everton to clean this game up uh not lose uh, the way they lost you know king dennis uh, amazing uh, returns attacking returns from them uh, we were expecting watford to uh, get on the score sheet uh, sooner than later uh, they had uh, yeah. good shot games in last few weeks uh, but you know just kind of culminated in this game no yeah, absolutely i think it's just it's like every all all the next four five uh, game weeks uh, goals have come in and i think yeah. but but the goals goals scored by king were pretty pretty uh, he looked pretty good pretty good in touch as well and he hasn't been playing for a long time but uh, you know we're going to cover uh, budget midfielders and budget strikers and and king is right up there uh, his price looks good if we look at uh, watford's fixtures uh, they still are in the bottom half so southampton home but they do have a i think quite a quite a brutal run so arsenal united leicester chelsea yeah, city yeah i think um, next game and then yeah we'll ship out there what for players yeah and maybe or you who want to get in king you know you should wait till at least 16 game week when the burnley brentford and crystal palace kind of a run comes in though uh, so yeah ranieri you know is his his you could see his magic on the team uh, obviously his first game was against liverpool which i think came too early for him and they lost 5-0 but uh, this was a, this was a phenomenal everton is obviously again everton at home is is, is not an easy fixture any day so so there was a good one uh any any other game which you which you which took your uh, attention i mean i think took everybody's everybody's attention was uh, <laughs> liverpool thrashing united away uh yeah. i honestly expected the game uh, uh, i mean liverpool to win the game uh, i think united have been very very shaky defensively 
uh, with a couple of players missing uh, uh, varan and and uh, obviously you know he is he is he has been a big miss uh, having said that they, we still expected them to be far far better than what they were so yeah. that was a surprise uh, salah's hat trick against uh, united uh, away was a was a surprise uh, i don't think there were too many clear cut options for captaincy uh, if lukaku had been there uh, i don't think a lot yeah. of people would have captained salah so it turned out to be lucky for people who had him in the team and didn't have to pick lukaku i mean maybe lukaku would have right. scored correct correct I expect him to get a hat trick though but yeah surprise of the week that was the game of the week uh, uh, before the week started and i think a uh, lot of talking points uh, after the week ended but a fantastic game no absolutely uh, and i think it's will definitely have some repercussions on ole as a manager as well but uh, i i would i would feel that united is going to come back strongly after this uh, it's united after all uh, and this is and they lost to liverpool 5-0 yeah. which i think is, is the biggest victory ever for liverpool at old trafford uh so sala with a hat trick uh, kita with the goal and and jota again with a goal we will cover as i said we will cover uh, you know the bid price uh, midfielders as well and jota i think is right up there in in, in terms of his statistics uh five goals five different assists uh so it was it was including sala and and trent as well so it was a game which was uh, just uh, as as a liverpool fan it was just unreal to see what was uh, just happening there uh one more game i just want to talk about is uh, the brentford leicester one yes this game was uh, one of the highlights of the game week uh tillemans again you know he's 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 been in some some form now uh i think he again had he is one of the midfielders who had a double digit haul now the only thing about brentford we can talk about is uh, you know the you know the, there's a couple of injury news which are coming out of the camp one is uh, the go- the goalkeeper is ruled out for the next 3 4 months which is a uh, big blow i'm not sure how how many what's his ownership percentage but uh, he was the first choice to get into the defense and i think mbuem was now also injured but uh, not not sure whether he's going to be playing on the weekend uh, do you, you have mbuem in your no, team uh, no i have tony uh, and excellent run of fixtures coming up uh, so yeah no i didn't punt on mbuem uh, i wanted to get uh, him in uh, you need to double up if you really want to strengthen uh, expensive uh, or get expensive buys in other part of the team i think with the fixtures uh, i don't know what it looks like yeah burnley norwich and newcastle uh, tasty fixtures yeah. and brentford has been playing well uh, you know we have seen that in the last few weeks but that's a blow but if not i think people are going to get tony in uh, that's that's one short shot way of getting some attacking points and probably one or two from the defense they've been pretty solid defensively as well and with these yeah. three fixtures we expect a couple of clean sheets coming uh, coming through as well so we will see a lot of brentford uh, players in a lot of squads over the next 3 to 4 weeks anuj no definitely and we can, we can use this as a segue to you know read the team stats offensively and brentford uh, so obviously the first column is it's been filtered by xg uh, season uh, for the season and uh, you know there there are no surprises who are the top 5 uh which might change soon if uh, you know if united and uh, if united united can easily fall out of the top 5 here uh but for the last four uh, game weeks if you see the xg i think brentford is uh, number 3 so in spite of having uh, you know if you see the fixture difficulty rating in the last four which was in number 19 and this oh. still had the third third best uh, xg so and looking at the fixture that we see there at number 1 uh, fixture difficulty rating and it it will be interesting to see if mbomo is not there uh, if you know if there's if there's any replacement for uh, you know mbomo i think they have uh, uh, another midfielder i'm not forgetting his name uh, just a second so yeah kanos is there mm-hmm. uh, who 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 actually has given the same number of fpl points as uh, as mbomo he's he's at the same price um i think this is the one yeah i think it's this is the one who's 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 supposed to be another live wire but uh, i think is injured so so it'll be interesting to see how they shape up now because of this uh, double injury of uh, raya and uh, mbomo 
uh, yeah, I mean, uh, FDR uh, of one, and uh, you know they've, they've done well in the last four. This is a surprising stat you, you, you're just showing, right? So, uh, basis this, uh, you, you you would expect a lot of people to at least have one attacker if they already don't have them in their team, uh, or or maybe <laughs> double up. I think it 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 calls for uh, uh, a lot of. Uh, uh, you know, focus on a lot of attention. I think Brentford, both on the defensive side as well as uh, attacking side, I think I think we'll see a lot of uh, players being drafted in. No, absolutely, absolutely, and that's why I think Mbuemo's price went up. Uh, I actually was waiting for this week to get in uh, Pinock, the defender, uh, but he also kind of. Uh, got injured early on in the not early on in the second half of uh, against Leicester last week but he's as of now he's showing 75 percent chances of making it so if, if he's fit free if he's declared fit I'm definitely uh getting him in because uh I don't have Tony I have Mbuemo right now so so at least got to have two um from from Brentford Jansen can be uh, another defensive player. yeah yeah Jansen can be another one uh he has so these are the two defenders who have been giving attacking returns as well yeah, absolutely. Uh, just to give you, just to give you uh, an idea in terms of how many points they have been giving is they are. So let's say Jansen is at forty-one points, uh, Rudiger is at forty-five, right? So so there's hardly any difference uh, there, and Rudiger is much more expensive. Yeah. Uh, so, so same is the case with Pinock. Pinock is at forty-one. Diaz is at forty-two. So you know so. So there are there, there is a case for Brentford defense definitely. Uh, no, nothing much surprising here, right? Uh, in terms of the offensive stats for teams: uh, Liverpool, City, uh, West Ham, Chelsea, United, Wolves uh, have kind of fallen a little bit in terms of their last four games. Um, and but but their fixtures. So the worry about them is that they, they have fallen. The XG numbers have fallen in the last four game weeks, in spite of having number one uh, fixtures in the FDR. But uh, they are still at number five for the next four game weeks. Uh, do you have any assets from Wolves? I do. I do. Uh, I have uh, Jimenez and I have uh, Size. So, uh, right, right. I to, plan to hold on to them for for some more time. Uh, I've had I've kept patience with uh, with both of them. Uh, but yeah, with the with the next three four fixtures, uh, I don't intend to rotate them. Uh, once the fixture fix, the next set of fixtures are over, um, you know and that probably will cons- coincide with my uh, timing of the wild card. That's when I'll I'll get them out. But yeah, plan to plan to stick around with them. Right, right. Uh, just to have a last look at the teams with easier fixture in the next four uh, uh, game weeks. Uh, Norwich is at number three. Now we can have a look at their fixture that they have. Uh, but Norwich has Leeds home, Brentford away, which I don't think is uh, easier. It's an easy game for them. Southampton home, Wolves home, Newcastle away. Is there a case for uh, Pookie? Who is that? He's at five point eight. Uh, because I don't see. I tried very hard to get any to see any other attacker if there is anybody, but I, I couldn't see. I couldn't really. No, absolutely. I mean, uh, if if somebody is looking at. Uh, uh, you know, getting a cheap forward and trying to adjust midfield, maybe yes. But you know, you have Tony. If people don't have him, uh, probably he's better suited uh, to come in with the fixtures that they have. Jimenez, uh, as we spoke, it doesn't make sense to leave him out uh, at this point in time. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, even if somebody needs to draft in uh, Puki, but the way Norwich is playing, uh, even with this easy set of fixtures, I'm not too sure whether they're going to score too many goals. Confidence exactly. is very, very low. Uh, seven zero thrashing always, uh, you know, goes down negatively. We'll have to wait for a game or two, maybe, uh, and then see if we need to draft somebody in for the next two or three, which are also relatively easier. I, I probably won't, were, won't get anybody yeah. in. No, and, and they have only scored two goals uh, in, the, in the whole season yet in this yeah, season yeah. so far. Though, though you could say they have had a really, really tough fixture, but they, they but they did play Watford at home. They lost 3-1. They have played Burnley, which was 0-0. Brighton home, you know, 0-0. So, 
so they against against the second bottom half of the teams they have done okay they've got two draws out of burnley and uh, brighton brighton uh, i would say it got a good result for them you know and not letting them score was a decent one so uh, next five fixtures if if they were to save the season i think these are the five fixtures they have to look at otherwise uh, you know these are 15 points uh, i would be shocked if they get all 15 but even if they even if they don't even get six out of this i think i think season is definitely over for them and that's why that's where that's where i feel that's where i feel uh, uh, i think these guys, norwich might just turn uh, turn a leaf uh, you know in terms of the, how the season has been so far so, oh, and if, you look, if you look at the five fixtures i think the first two are the the toughest ones so uh, a lot will be seen how against you know how they play against leeds and how they fare right, against Brentford. Right. Uh, if we see players doing well, that can probably uh, be a trigger for few managers to draft one or two players in for Southampton Wolves back-to-back home game and Newcastle away. And that those three fixtures are attractive. Uh, but yeah, we'll have to see how this uh, this this game goes. Yeah. Right. Uh, just a quick look at the team stats defensively. Again, it's been filtered by uh, expected goals conceded for the season. And the next column is the last four fixtures uh, of XGC. Uh, surprising part here is Brentford is at two for the season. Uh, Brentford is at second. Uh, obviously, there's, City is way way above everybody else. So Brentford Wolves is still at number three for the for the mm-hmm. for the season. And I think you have obviously size, uh, but they haven't had uh, too many clean sheets yet, right? No, no. I mean, uh, size had given. Attacking return in one of the games, but it's yeah, been on yeah. and off. Uh, it's been quite frustrating, to be honest. Uh, there are yeah. times when you really have to decide whether you want to put him on the bench or or make him play. Uh, right. they, they they are in the top, uh, you know, three, uh, top four or, or top three, but it doesn't translate. Uh, if I correct, you know, correct. My team. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Crystal Palace is at number four as well. Uh, I think they have had two or three clean sheets themselves. Uh, Especially the last four uh, fixtures, their XGC have been impressive, but but they had an easier run. As you can see, it's, they were at number three for the last four fixtures. Their fixtures get tougher now, and they go to number 12. Liverpool is at five. Chelsea is at six. Uh, so, you know, two out of the three biggies are there in terms of uh, who were supposed to, who for whom managers are invested in a lot of these assets, uh, for for especially for Chelsea and defence. Uh, you know, especially the Chilwells of the world and the Reese James of the world. Uh, so, I think Scholes, when it, when Scholes said that uh, Chelsea has the worst defense in top four, uh, I would not say top four, but at least top three. They are they are they are the worst defense right now. Uh, Arsenal's last four uh, defensive numbers have been impressive. Uh, they have they have had the third best defense in the last four fixtures, but obviously they. Uh, they were expected to have these numbers because of the fixtures. Yep. Uh, Tottenham has been surprising. Uh, they have they they have been fourth best in the last four game weeks, and their fixtures now get a little easy as well. Uh, but I don't know. Tot- Tottenham defense. Uh, are there the, are there any assets that you are really tracking? No, no, not at all, not at all. I mean, uh, the, the fixtures yeah. soon after. I think four or five game weeks. Uh, we're going to look at uh, attacking uh, attacking options there. Yeah, Tottenham, pretty... I think, uh, only makes sense for the for the songs and the kings yeah. of the world. From 12th week onwards. From 12th, yeah. So, Leeds, Burnley, Brentford, Norwich. Yeah, that's a good run. All right. Uh, so, we will move on to the budget midfielders. Uh, again, this has been this has been filtered through the season uh, expected goal involvement. Um, and obviously... You know, there is the, right at the top is uh, Jota, which which with 4.85 uh, against United, he had a, he had two returns uh, with a goal and an assist. Uh, for the goal, actually, he, to be honest, he didn't really work that much hard. He was just right at the, at the right place at the right time for Trent's cross, and he was had he missed it, uh, Milner was right behind him, so it was absolutely fine. Mount, obviously, with his performance, now reaches number two, uh, as we as we discussed earlier on. Uh, you know the fixtures get uh, really nice. Uh, any any out of this list, any uh, midfielders that you're looking at, or which you have, which you're going to stick with, or which you're eyeing to get in uh, in the next two three game weeks? 
Rafina is somebody I have in my team uh, with the hmm. cloud over injury. I don't know how to play him. Uh, we'll, I'll probably have him in the squad and, and see if he makes it. Uh, ben Rama is still there. Uh, he's the target that I'm looking at to remove this week and uh, get either of uh, Saka or Smithro. Uh, Arsenal, while the fixtures are not very attractive, but they right. have like two premium home games coming in the next four. Uh, where, uh, you know, there could be serious double-digit hauls there from either of these. Uh, so, it will make up for uh, for the for the game week where they don't score. So, I'm looking at a block of three or four weeks. So, if I have to substitute a cheap or a budget mid with a budget mid, I think I'll look at uh, an Arsenal mid. Uh, but right. apart from that, I don't see anybody else who is a sure shot, you know, have to be drafted in. And Buemo, obviously. Uh, but again, we'll have to wait and see what his status is. Right. I think for me, uh, it's. I, I think I mentioned it in the last pod as well to Sushant and Bhavan. For me, uh, Rafini has been re- really frustrating. I think he, I know he's, he's been injured. Obviously, you can't do anything about it. But the team is not doing well. Uh, the team has a lot of injuries. Obviously, Bamford is not there. The defense had injuries. Now, the defense is back, but they're still leaking goals. I thought that his this injury was a sign for me to really take him out because I was anyways looking to take him out. The only thing which is stopping me is obviously it's Norwich. Now, I think even if he obviously Bielsa has mentioned that you know he, he's 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 not a doubt uh, for the game uh, for the weekend, but yeah. uh, I'll be surprised if he starts. But definitely he might come from the bench uh, if I have to do a substitute this uh, week. I would take out Rafinha and get the man in form, Tilly Manzin. I'm just, uh, I think he's 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 on he's on fire, uh, and he's yes he so he's he's been involved in more of the goals and rather than not in the assist on the assist front. And if you see Leicester's uh, uh, fixtures, yes, Arsenal home obviously it's a tough one. Leeds away, Chelsea home, yes, that's that's quite tough. Then Watford, Southampton, Villa, Newcastle, Tottenham. Uh, Tillemans is at 6.4. I I wouldn't I wouldn't get a better chance to get get him in, uh, especially for Rafinha's like for like replacement. Uh, I don't have Foden, so obviously Foden is way way. Uh, he's 8.1. I think I'm sure tomorrow he'll be 8.2. A lot of transfers and happening. Uh, you'll be looking at Tillemans or or Foden. Uh, I have uh, KDB in my team, and I think he's going to start. Yeah, same, team. same. Yeah. So. Didn't want to double up there. Uh, if I didn't have him, uh, probably yes. But uh, with the rotation uh, at City, you know, you never know uh, how things will pan out. So I'll wait for a week or two. Probably get uh, him if required when I do my wild card, but not at this point in time. Right. But you're right. With, uh, you're right uh, with Rafina. I mean, last four five weeks uh, has been really frustrating. They've had a decent uh, set of fixtures, but you know, no, they had a phenomenal fixtures. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he has not had a double digit haul. Uh, you know, we expected him to get at least one, uh, you know, a couple of attacking, three attacking returns in, in nine games. Uh, yeah, but, you know, Norwich home. And if he's, if, he, if, if there's a chance for him to start, uh, I would probably just keep him in my 11 and, and hope for mm. the best. The only thing you don't want is, uh, you know, him coming on for like 10, 15 minutes and giving a point. So that, that's something that obviously yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully makes the, makes the team starts and, uh, and with Norwich, and I expect whoever plays against them to get at least a couple of goals. Yeah, yeah. No, no, absolutely. Uh, so, I will definitely wait till, obviously, the press conference and we'll see then. A word on Foden, actually, to be honest. Uh, you know, I might sound like I'm just being a devil's advocate today and uh, uh, I, I haven't given credit to Mount. Now, I'm not going to give credit to Foden as well. But, yes, he was, he was in the most attacking of the positions. But to be honest, I was really surprised the way Brighton played and how open they were. Uh, yes, uh, you know it's it's Pep's team. Obviously, they are known to take advantage of such uh, such miscalculations from the opponent. But but Foden's goal, uh, his both his goals, I, I I think it was he was a tad lucky there. You know, uh, it it especially the second one. I think it was uh, it was Jesus who had hit it and it just clipped. Uh, you know, Foden's uh, calf, yeah. and even the first one, I think, where Grealish had given an assist, 
Okay, fine. You can give it to him. But I, but I thought it, first two, three times I saw it, I thought it was an own goal by the defender. Uh, because maybe I want, wanted that confirmation bias. But but I I really didn't... Uh, not was not that really impressed with him in, in terms of the 18 points that he got. I think it's, uh, it's, it's a little flattering for... Uh, people who don't own him, uh, but uh, I'm sure I'm sure the owners would be very happy. Yeah, I mean, same same case with Mount, as you said. I mean, I, I don't expect uh, similar halls, uh, even if the games are easier for these uh, these these two teams. Both were a case of just being there at, at the right time, the right fixture, the right scenario. And, and for people who had, had them, they obviously got lucky. But uh, uh, again, it's just one of those weeks where you know, your just punt works or or you have the right play in the team and, and they just end up giving you the right haul. So, I won't read too much into it. Uh, same with Mount. We'll have to wait and see for a few more weeks whether they have been, they are consistent, whether they play regularly. Uh, that's another thing with yeah. uh, Kitty. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't intend to get him in with KDB there. But but I'll, I'll keep an eye on, on Foden uh, because at the, at the price he's at, uh, especially with the difference uh, in price with KDB, uh, you know, if, if there's consistent returns from him, I think I think he'll be the go-to midfielder as far as, uh, as uh, City is concerned. To be honest, correct, correct. No, it depends on how KDB is also used because I was surprised that he was benched yeah. in the last game, uh, and I am. I'm, I'm, I'm also, also, also he started yesterday, so that's another. That yeah, exactly. Right. So. Uh, I think though for, I think Foden also kind of came in later on, but for hardly any minutes. But the uh, city's fixtures, you know, next next is Palace home, uh, which is which is okay. Which which uh, it won't be easy. How how Vieira has been uh, make, make, forming his uh, team, uh, but the next three is United away, Everton home, West Ham home. Uh, I don't really see Foden really you know going berserk in these three fixtures against Crystal Palace. He might. But uh, United away, you know, whatever said and done, however they played, it's fine. Uh, but like I said in the beginning, I don't think United is going to... I think they're going to come back strong. United, Everton, Everton again, they lost 5-2 to Watford. I'm sure it's Rafa Benitez right there, uh, good manager. And yeah. then West Ham. And West Ham is West Ham at home these for the last couple of seasons. So, I really don't see in the next... Uh, obviously, leaving the 10th game week, game week 11, 12, 13... Uh, which is also not good news for uh, KDB owners as well. But uh, I, I really don't see K City really going berserk in these three game weeks. Doesn't look like uh, Crystal Palace probably is the best of the, of the lot. Yeah. With United, uh, while you say that uh, you know they'll, they'll bounce back, I think this is the week they are playing a, a tough team away, uh, and I'm sure uh, people players will will step up. Uh, it's been a humiliating loss, and I think they would want to bounce back. But Manchester derby, uh, it could be a trap, nil nil draw, or it could have goals. Yeah, yeah. We never know uh, which way it will go. But once you get through those, those three, four fixtures, then I think they have a, a decent run of fixtures. But then the risk about uh, City is when you have a uh, few easy games, you see a lot of rotation. And that's right. where uh, you know you tend to miss out if you have a premium uh, forward or a premium mid. So the idea is uh, just to balance uh, the team and then see right. if it makes sense to have. KDB in, but if you don't have KDB, uh, I would I would probably have Foden after three or four weeks. Even if he plays three out of five games and uh, he does what he did, say half of what he did last week, I think he's he's, he's definitely a yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm I don't know somehow I'm still not uh, convinced uh, that he's gonna keep hauling every every now and then. Uh, okay, so I just want to check. Uh, I just want to show one thing. So I, I've written Kovacic's name there. Obviously, he has been. Uh, he's the cheapest of the budget midfielder, five point three. Um, has had one goal and five assists. So I'm just gonna, you know, spend two three minutes on him and why uh, he's a good city asset to have at five point three. Obviously, everybody has at least one defender. Uh, Lukaku is not there, and this is exactly the. And it gives an opportunity for us to look at such assets. Uh, this is what he has been, what he, what he has done. Uh, you know, if you see his, uh, and you know, I would like to say uh, this, this: all this data has been taken from Fantasy Football Scout since since we are members there. Uh, so these are the assists in green. If you see, uh, you know, two out of the five assists that he has given has come from the center line. So that also kind of shows, you know, uh, his. See the, the way he passes in terms of long passes, and he can he can cut through the defense. Uh, 
he has started all games. Uh, I think after Mendy and Rudiger, he's played the maximum minutes. Uh, one goal, five assists. Uh, he has played more games than uh, Giorgino. Uh, the only only flip side to him is that he has played the Champions League games as well, um, and 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 he has played. I think um, two. He, he played two Champions League out of three Champions League games. He played two, two of them for ninety minutes. Uh, one was I think he was subbed on. Now, if you see in in the fixtures that uh, is shown here, you know there have been fixtures where he has been subbed on as well. He has played most of them at ninety minutes. Uh, one was against Liverpool. Obviously, they were ten. They were down to ten men, so he was subbed off because uh, Tuchel got in one more defender. Against Arsenal, they were leading two two zero. Uh, and, and he got he got in Kante because he wanted to secure the score line. So so Kovacic was uh, you know benched. Um, game against Southampton, it was one one uh, when it was seventy second or seventy third minute where he was sub subbed out. And after that came the red card. So you know the three one again the three one score line is is quite flattering. But he was subbed out because of the fact that there was a stalemate going on and Southampton was really defending well. Uh, Against Brentford, it was zero, uh, they were leading 1-0. I think the goal was scored by Chilwell in the first half. Uh, and I think Brentford was all over them in the second half, as everybody knows. You know, it was it, it's a it's a shock that the, the score line was 0-1 for Chelsea. So I think just to get that extra uh, padding in terms of in the in the defense, uh, he was subbed off. But if you see in against all the uh, so against all the uh, bottom half of the teams, he plays more, more, more attacking, and and his assists and his returns are coming from that uh, against those teams. And if you see this uh, Chelsea's fixtures from 10 to 18, uh, you know you can there's a lot of blue fixtures rather than you know a red. Newcastle, Burnley, yes, Leicester, Manu, he might he might play more defensively. Uh, Watford, Leeds, so 5.3 uh, owned by 10%. Uh, less than 10%, who has been consistently giving a return here and there. Uh, I, I don't think uh, it's, it's a, it'll be a blunder to really get him in. Uh, yes, now people have Mount, so now that's the only thing. But I'm sure people who only have one defense and Mount, uh, or two defense and no Mount, can look at him, 5.3. Agreed, uh, Anuj. I think, you know, I... I... I was looking at him uh, uh, momentarily a couple of weeks back, uh, and in fact, before today's, today's session, I was also checking on uh, you know what his stats look like. Uh, while he has uh, a very you know poor uh, XZ per ninety minutes uh, and yeah. XA per ninety minutes, if you compare to the Chelsea defenders and people like Mount and Pulisic, but you know he's got those numbers. Uh, he's got those uh, uh, points for 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 their for his managers, right? So obviously seven zero Norwich. Uh, even if you take that out, uh, there are like three weeks where he's got attacking returns. Uh, and for a yeah, for absolutely. a budget midfielder at five point three, and with the fixtures that they have, uh, it's it's worth a punt. Uh, so again, for me, I don't have any Chelsea defense or, or Chelsea attackers. If I have to get one, I'll probably look at. Uh, a mount or maybe one of the cheaper uh, defenders from Chelsea. I would right. not look at him. But if people are sitting with uh, extra free, free transfers and they want to get somebody in for the next two or three weeks, uh, I think I think he's a he's worth a shot. Uh, he'll start all games, probably play majority of the game, if not uh, if not ninety minutes. And and there are chances uh, the way he plays and the way Chelsea is set up. Uh, you know he he'll he'll have chances. He'll he'll probably give an assist or two, if not a goal. So. Definitely, what a what the consideration. You know, and uh, I think uh, last season, obviously, I think he was he he just plays around. I just checked; he just played around thousand minutes, and maybe he was injured. But the season before that, nineteen twenty season, he played around two thousand minutes. Uh, but his return was one goal and three assists only, and now he's already at one goal and five assists. So, so obviously, Tuchel is has kind of you know, realized that okay, that he's my go-to man uh, in terms of. Uh, We'll, we'll have to see uh, whether he's only meant to be more attacking in, with with the uh, in the bottom half teams or because if you see against uh, Arsenal, Liverpool, where he obviously hasn't had a return, he he actually was closer towards the defense rather than uh, towards uh, the attackers. So I think he's a he's a 
is a decent uh, punt. Uh, uh, I, I wouldn't say he's a punt because he's 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 playing consistently. He's playing most of the minutes. So it's 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 it's, it's for a person like me who's not going to get bound. Uh, I might look at him as well. And 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 if Mbuomo gets injured, so you know, right? So I don't, we don't know how how long he's going to be injured for. Yeah. Yeah, we're just looking at the last five games stats. Uh, he has the highest uh, XA uh, amongst all the Chelsea, you know, team members. So, yeah, th- there is a case, uh, uh, you know, to be made, especially with the price. Uh, you know, five point three. Especially with the price. Had it been six plus, maybe not. Absolutely, you you won't get any any cheaper option here. I mean, and, the, and, the, the a, and a and a fun fact, fun fact about him is that he is right now. Uh, Number one Chelsea player in terms of getting the highest FPL points. Wow. As in, he's at 46. The defenders are at 45, 44, 44, 43, 42, whatever. But he's still at 46. He's at, he's at number one right now. Uh, anyway, Chelsea, you know, the FPL points are so distributed. Uh, I think oh, there was a stat which was uh, mentioned by the commentator against Norway that the 17th different goal scorer in that game. So that anyways is, is a berserk. So rather than rather than going for a goal scorer, go for a guy who's uh, assisting all the goals. So absolutely. All right, quickly on to the budget forwards, which I think now with the Lukaku, Ronaldo, really, uh, you know, those kind of uh, premium assets not really firing. I think budget forwards really make make a lot of sense and a, and a lot of time and should be invested there. Uh, who do you have right now with in your team? And uh, you know, uh, since you are going to be wildcarding in the next three or four game weeks, who? who who do you have your eye on? Uh, I have three from this list uh, that you're showing, Anuj. I have Antonio, I have uh, Tony, and I have Jimenez. So all three for the budget category that has allowed me to get uh, KDP in uh, along with Salah. Uh, if I were to look at uh, a premium forward going forward, uh, it, it's going to be it's going to be Kane. Um, after a couple of weeks, three three weeks right. maybe, I don't see anybody else uh, fitting in. Maybe Ronaldo. After United are done with their uh, set of tough fixtures, but uh, it's it's probably Kane uh, before Ronaldo. Uh, I'll have to see how Manu actually plays when the fixtures get easy. Yeah, uh, yeah. But for, for now, you can't remove Tony. Uh, for now, you probably will stick with Jimenez. Uh, looking at the fixtures, Antonio is a question mark. But with uh, his last game uh, performance, you know, you make it. It makes me wonder whether I you know should. Boot him out uh, because the fixtures are getting a little tough for uh, for West Ham. Uh, alternate fixtures are all you know Liverpool, Man City, Chelsea over the next six. Uh, but again, he's been a guy who was uh, who was leading the charts uh, along with Salah in in XAs and XCs. Uh, if West Ham where to score, he's the one who's you know who's involved. Uh, but yeah, out of the three, if I have to uh, remove one and get somebody else in, it will probably be Antonio. But I'll, I'll stick around with Tony and uh, Jimenez. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it makes sense uh, because of the fact that uh, Jimenez, though Jimenez is playing a different role uh, this season, uh, Tony definitely is he's, he's, he's a must. You have him. I think uh, he has to be in the team. I don't have it, so I'm trying to look for how to get him in. Uh, on Antonio, you know, he has, uh, you, you rightly said that the West Ham's fixtures are getting tougher. They're at right, number 17. Uh, Villa is always the next one. Might be, might be all right. Then Liverpool, Wolves, City. Yep. Brighton, Chelsea, Burnley, Arsenal. So, as you as you said, you know every alternate game is is a, is, a, is a tough one, but you know this guy has scored against against the big teams as well. So he he's uh, he's like somebody who's just on fire this season. Consistent. He has missed one game because he got a I think two yellow cards in the against Southampton. Yeah. Uh, out of the eight games he has played, I think two games he hasn't given a return, but six he has. Uh, and he's playing all 90 minutes, you know, uh, he, he's not being, as of now, he's not been introduced this season in, in Europa League. Obviously, he's definitely not playing uh, Carabao. Uh, so, so Moyes is really taking care of him and, and he is making him play all 90 minutes. Uh, I sold him a couple of weeks back. He did not return uh, for the two weeks, but yes, yes, uh, against Tottenham, he has returned. Uh, so there is still not uh, a compelling case to really sell him, but yes, uh, of course the fixtures: Liverpool defense, yes, City defense, yes, Chelsea defense, yes. So yeah, so these are the three 
in the next five game weeks. Uh, maybe for the Villa game, yeah, you can keep him. Uh, but yeah, I think he falls pretty well for your wildcard plans. No, absolutely. And if, if you look at the next four fixtures, uh, Anuj in front of us, uh, except for Brentford, uh, Chelsea, obviously, they are short on, on, on forward options. Uh, and Southampton to Southampton to an extent. If you look at uh, uh, outside of that, you don't have too many, uh, you know, set of fixtures where you would want to get a forward in from a particular team. Uh, I already have Correct. Brentford uh, forward. I have a Wolves forward. So, uh, those two are there. Apart from that, you know, Southampton maybe. Uh, so, if I have to compare, maybe just keeping him, keeping him in the team for maybe two of those next three fixtures uh, with yeah. Liverpool squeezed in between. I, I'll probably go with that, uh, and then maybe boot him out, uh, which will coincide again with my wild card. So that that's the plan. Uh, but yeah, I mean Southampton is the only team I I could probably look at uh, from where you would want to get a a, a cheap or a budget uh, forward. Apart from that, everything else uh, there is nothing that tells you that you know I have to get a forward in from this particular team. So you 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 you're gonna get. Uh... Strikers for when you do your wild card, basically you're gonna go fixtures over form. Yes, yes, that's a plan. That's a because plan. because otherwise Jesus in terms of form is is I think I think he's the most nailed on city attacker according to me. Uh, he has been injured. He didn't. He hasn't played just because of his injury. Otherwise, he has played. His his numbers are fantastic uh, this season. Uh, I think he's. I read somewhere uh, somebody's comment that he's relieved. He doesn't have too much of pressure. To score goals now because he's not uh, playing as a striker. Uh, he has returned in almost uh, almost every game, uh, you know, assists and goal and so on and so forth. Uh, Antonio is what eight point two now. Antonio eight point two, yes. Yeah. So if somebody has money in the bank, uh, Jesus looks to be a good one. Uh, obviously, the fixtures as we as we just discussed, City. Uh, Crystal Palace home, United away, Everton home, West Ham. Not too bad, not really easy as well. Uh, uh, what what we discussed about Foden, you know, can can really apply for Jesus as well. But he has looked good. I think I think he's uh, quite consistent. One more interesting name that we saw there was uh, Penteke. Um, you know, obviously he had a great game uh, with with the attacking threat he possesses. They have one tough fixture uh, this week coming up, but then the, the fixture list eases out. Uh, so he could be another uh, option as well. And uh, you know, I see him to be in the top five in the last four games. And uh, after City, uh, probably a good differential if, if somebody is looking at shipping out uh, Antonio and getting another budget forward in. At 6.3, I think he's attractive. So let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Correct. Wolves, Wolves, Burnley. Home, yeah. Burnley. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That could be a differential there. So the only thing, the only thing with Benteke, I think what uh, managers and and I, I included, uh, we feel that it's Benteke. You know, we haven't really seen him perform after the since the time he's left Aston Villa. Uh, yeah. He was a he, he was a Liverpool, did nothing. I, I don't know where he went after that. I think he went to Crystal Palace only. Uh, I think I read somewhere that now since there is competition for places. And I think his 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 contract is coming up for renewal or whatever extension. Uh, he is his you know like typical human mentality that now he's kind of uh, showing his form. And I think it's good to see him like that. Uh, he 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 actually had a second goal uh, pulled out because of uh, offside uh, against. He's looking very sharp. Uh, but that might be a punt as well. Six point three, uh, not a bad not a bad price point. Absolutely. I was just you know. Edward is obviously another option there. Uh, he is he's done pretty okay. But if I have to pick one of these two, maybe yes, it probably will be Benteke. Uh, last two games, two attacking returns. A good set of fixtures coming up. So, uh, might be in the consideration for sure. Hmm. Uh, with Liverpool's fixtures, next four fixtures, are number seven in the rating. Would Firmino ever cross your mind? No. Doesn't look like. I mean, I already have a lot of money tied up with uh, Trent and uh, Salah. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be just uh, too much of concentration of, of funds with one team if I were to go for Firmino. Mm -hmm. But no, uh, I, I'll stick with uh, these two for for the foreseeable uh, future. But no plans of getting anybody in, else in. 
right, but again right. uh, i think there is a case to be made if uh, people don't have trent in the team uh, but again with the fixtures it's it it says rank 7th i don't know who are they playing uh, yeah brighton home west ham away arsenal home southampton everton wolves villa it's not, it's not too bad yeah yeah, yeah. but again uh, would you go for somebody else uh, you can only pick three forwards uh, with fomino there is always that risk of rotation or of him being rested mm. I, i think that probably just sways your decision in favor of somebody else uh, as compared to fomino and that's what that's how i'll think uh, we have spoken about tony we have spoken about himenez there's antonio there is benteke you probably and obviously jesus uh, so maybe three out of those five uh, fomino doesn't look that attractive to me you know to be honest uh, yeah he's he's definitely a you know he could be rotated by club but uh, mane is also under rotation he he wasn't yeah. started against manchester united because i think uh, club felt that yes fomino is is the man in form all, along with sala and he wanted jota as well into the in the team so so this this whole philosophy about uh, fomino being on the bench always uh, might not be true so i think the only guy who's going to start all games is sala and other thing other three might just get to trade but yeah rotations uh, is there but for 8.9 if if any manager really wants to take that headache it's fine i i would say jesus would play more minutes in that in that price range uh like we we discussed josh king i think it's too early to get him watford has a terrible run of fixtures terrible run of fixtures absolutely uh one guy i've been looking at is uh, bro broja broja uh you know because i have i'm stuck with adam armstrong at 6 and he he i, I doubt he's going to come back and I'm, i'm i'm still fortunate that his price is not going down uh he looks to be this guy looks to be a good deal uh, southampton to all and the fixtures also look uh, pretty decent there at number 3 yeah what uh, what for away villa home norwich liverpool is the only red fixture and arsenal up, but in, but entering christmas i think their fixtures are looking really really amazing i don't know i mean he shows injured uh, not sure yeah that's the only thing yeah. that's the only thing i've been waiting for those i would have uh, got him in by now so so yeah but he's a, at 5 he's, he's he's the cheapest striker i think and i think he's going to play most of the games uh, che adams is also back now So yeah you could say yeah there are three three strikers now in, in you know technically for Southampton like most of the teams now and so rotation might happen because of the festive season coming in and Southampton uh, are a good team i think the coach is good so they would definitely love to uh, target those european places so so that's a so interesting one okay we discussed uh, you <laughs> know which is a, is a tricky one i have huang so have been really lucky with him he's been just uh, you know his his numbers are really i i don't think it can be really sustained uh, he had four shots on target all four goals so uh, i hope he goes on because the fixture wolves fixtures are also decent for the next yeah. four five game weeks all right uh, we move to the premium forwards so uh, you know obviously ronaldo lukaku is is not in, not in the picture these days uh Oba is the one who I wanted to talk to you about uh, since you're an Arsenal fan. So Wadi Oba Kane because Kane you're looking to get him in in uh, on your wild card. Uh, what's what's the what do you think of Oba? Uh so I don't judge I think it's about the price uh, and the set of fixtures coming up. I know he's been uh, scoring but is not you know lit the room uh, we have not seen a double digit haul uh, yet. uh and yeah. if if and i would say there are better and cheaper ways to get into the arsenal attack uh through esr uh the way he is played right. and the way he gets into those positions where he is very likely to provide an assist or and and take a shot at the goal that's what he does uh, uh and he's always central so with the option that we just saw uh in the on the, in the previous uh, section uh, you would rather invest uh in premium defense mm-hmm. with chelsea and with liverpool uh, maybe a city defender have uh, sala obviously you can't have him out of the team uh, it doesn't leave for too much of a room for uh, having oba at his price i would rather have 5 6 7 million uh, forwards who are likely to score as much as oba would 
Uh, but again, having said that, there are two plum fixtures coming up. And uh, I expect uh, him to at least get on and, and score a brace in at least one of the two. Uh, so, right. it's, it's worth a punt, uh, but I would stay away. If I were to pick one, uh, I'll go with ESR. Right. No, it's, it's good that you mentioned. Uh, I think Oba's form is very, very critical for Arsenal's form as well. Uh, I think whenever Arsenal hasn't done well, Oba hasn't scored or vice versa. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think I think he he's happy. The whole team looks happy around him, uh, and, and and obviously the and the stadium is also uh, has a better tone to it. Uh, a quick one on uh, Wadi. So I got him in last week. Uh, he's obviously showing injured. I think now it's been it's been mentioned that he's his his fit. I think Brendan Rogers said that he's his joint training, so he's I think most likely to start against Arsenal, uh, and he has a great track record against Arsenal as well. Uh, his his numbers have been looking good. Ten point six. Uh, he's the only I think striker who's in who's in that that kind of a bracket. Obviously his premium as well. Uh, so like we saw we saw his fixtures as well. Uh, Leicester can go on on a run. Arsenal leads only the Chelsea is the only game that they have which which he might not be able to get a return. But I would I would say that. Uh, Getting into December, he might still have uh, some gas left in him uh, before uh, we ship him out. No, absolutely. I mean, he had four great week. Uh, just looking at the numbers, and last week obviously he played forty five minutes. Uh, so when he plays, he scores. Yeah. That, 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 that's that's what I see. Uh, but again, uh, the same consideration here. Uh, if you get Wadi in, it kind of just stifles your uh, planning. If you were to correct, correct, look at you know a couple of other premium bids. So. Uh, let's see. Probably wait right. for a game or two, and then then take a call. Yeah, yeah, because he's not he's not the young Wadi which we know from you know, two three years back. So, so we we'll have to wait and watch. Hold okay, on. so we'll use this we'll use this segue to for you to spend some time on Arsenal. Uh, um, so yeah, all yours. Yeah, so uh, you know, I was just kind of looking at uh, getting uh, you know one or two Arsenal players in. Uh, not primarily because of the fixtures, but also, but primarily because you know there are a few really good budget options that can help you uh, allocate funds to uh, uh, you know other positions. So, just a quick team summary: uh, you know, four wins, three losses, uh, and two draws. Those three losses came in pretty early. Uh, so, you know, Arsenal have done pretty well if you look at the last six weeks. Tenth uh, position, fourteen points. Again, from where they were. Uh, with the beginning of fourth week, this looks uh, really, really encouraging. Three clean sheets again against uh, you know lower teams. I think Norwich, Burnley, and uh, Brighton, I believe. Uh, XG of 12 and XGA of uh, 15 on the lower side, but again, that's uh, primarily because of how the first three games panned out. FDR, we've already spoken about, uh, they are somewhere in the middle. Uh, now, what I thought to do here was just kind of uh, speak about some of the key attacking options uh, that one could look at uh, if they were looking at you know getting in uh, somebody from arsenal and also look at the defensive uh, options from the team if somebody were to look at getting somebody in from defense let's look at the attacking options first and obviously we have spoken about uh, oba and uh, esr briefly but uh, last five game weeks uh, that's the point hall that you see in the last five weeks 33 total points of ESR as compared to 26 for Oba and 24 for Saka. Uh, Lacazette doesn't play enough. Uh, Pepe, Odegaard, again, Odegaard, while he's playing uh, consistently, uh, we have not seen him on the uh, attacking side too often. And in fact, he has one of the poorest, uh, uh, you know, XA and XZ per 90 minutes in this team. But again, he's been playing a little deep, uh, been providing those, uh, uh, you know, pass to the the person who actually ends up getting an assist. So, he's been doing well, but from a FPL perspective, uh, not so much. Uh, if we were to look at a budget mid, it just boils down between uh, ESR and, and Saka. Uh, I would prefer ESR, uh, not because he has had uh, higher points than Saka over the last uh, five weeks, but primarily, as I discussed earlier, where he plays and he gets into those positions, takes shots um, all the time, and, and he's in the thick of things. So, he is the guy, if you were to look at uh, a budget mid, uh, like we discussed with a couple of other options, it actually lets 
managers release some funds where uh, yeah. and they can actually invest uh, elsewhere and two of the next uh, four fixtures uh, I was talking about uh, I think it's Watford and Newcastle uh, mm. and they are in the bottom three in terms of uh, XGA uh, XGC goals conceded I mean obviously Norwich right. is the third team there so Watford and Newcastle and both games are at home at the Emirates so I expect at least three or four goals in each of the games and it is pretty obvious that the attacking returns are going to spread across Oba, ESR and, and Saka. So, getting in ESR, uh, you know, at cheap, even if it doesn't do well against Liverpool or Leicester, uh, I think he'll make up uh, in one of those two big games. Uh, big games in terms of right. uh, opportunity. Uh, that's on the forwards. If you look at the defence, this is a little interesting. Uh, and one interesting stat, I wasn't sure till I actually looked at it the morning was, uh, Arsenal defence has had no attacking returns in the last... In this season, actually, yeah. in the last three games. Yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously, first three games, we didn't score. But over the last six, uh, absolutely zero attacking returns. I know Tierney has been getting into the good place, good positions. Uh, he's much better suited to get something uh, as compared to Tomiyasu. But uh, he, unfortunately, he's not done that. I think people are still holding on to White. Uh, he started off as a cheap option uh, with Arsenal again. I talk, spoke about Watford and Newcastle home. I think there are clean sheets there. But if somebody yeah. were to get into Arsenal defence, uh, Ramsdale is, is is the way to go. At that price, there aren't too many goalkeepers uh, who are like. Especially, to get... I think, especially after Raya's injury. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I know he won't get uh, a clean sheet uh, against Liverpool, probably not against Leicester. But the other two fixtures, the next four, uh, you know, we can expect six points plus maybe a save point or maybe a point yeah. or two on, on bonus. In fact, uh, uh, he has got what five. Points from saves in the last five games and uh, right. also had like two or three uh, uh, bonus points. That's the difference that you see between the other defenders. Nothing, nothing to choose from uh, from the defensive side. If people are holding on to a defender, they can do that and uh, get them play against Watford and Newcastle. Uh, but if somebody were to get in a, a defensive option from Arsenal, goalkeeper is is uh, probably the easiest and the most effective route. He plays, uh, you know, all the games. And if you see, the good thing about Arsenal here is the team is set. Um, Tierney got injured. Otherwise, you know, he would have played yeah. the, the entire, you know, 90 minutes as well. Uh, remaining three are kind of nailed on. Everybody plays 90 minutes. The team is set. So, the risk of rotation does not exist as far as uh, Arsenal is concerned. So, if you anybody wants to look at a four, four and a half uh, goalie, uh, Ramsdale is the one, uh, a four and a half defence. Uh, if you don't have white, white could be an option. I think two sheets, clean sheets in the next four are probably quite certain. So that's that's a quick uh, uh, view on Arsenal. No, also, yeah. also I think uh, none of these five defensive options have played since game week one, right? Some, some, uh, some sometime or the other, somebody has been injured or white yes. was co white white was tested positive. So in fact, last nobody... last yeah, last, last three four games, uh, you know, they, they they've been playing regularly, yeah. except right, for the game right. where Tierney was uh, was injured. But uh, yeah. and, and this is what I was telling earlier. We don't have uh, too many fixtures, uh, and there are enough defenders like Holding, Chambers, uh, there's mm -hmm. Tavares, who who can play the Carabao Cups and the FA Cup uh, games. But unless there's an injury to the five names that you see. I think these are the five uh, names who are going to play 90 minutes week in, week out, as far as yeah, uh, yeah. the Premier League is concerned. And that kind of uh, provides some stability if somebody were to look at a, a defensive option, knowing that, you know, uh, you can have him as a bench fodder, but uh, they'll always uh, give you 90 minutes if, if they were to come on. No, correct. I think Ra Ramsdale, I think, has been impressive in terms of his distribution as well. And uh, I think when, when uh, Aston Villa scored the goal uh, on the weekend, I think... He he was he was damn pissed about it, and he actually was shouting at the defenders. And obviously, he left it. You know, he he had to do away with his clean sheet. But uh, but even the commentator kind of uh, mentioned that you know Ramsdale really loves his clean sheets and the way we lost. And it and clean sheet was coming on the platter. So, but I think it was seventy third or seventy fourth minute when the score, yeah. goal was scored. So he looks he he is improving. It looks to be a looks to be. Uh, What's the money? Obviously, mean, yeah, yeah. There were, there were questions earlier, but uh, I mean, obviously, we've, we've just seen one fourth of the season. We'll see how it goes, but uh, he is showing promising signs. Uh, the confident keeper, good shot stopper, actually. Right. 
uh, and as you said, uh, Arteta wants to build this team to play from the back, uh, yeah. and he kind of fits in much better than uh, Leno did. Uh, but yeah, okay, uh, you know, we'll, we'll we'll wait and watch. All Interestingly, right, so, I mean, uh, if if yeah. people are looking at Arsenal defense, I, I was just you know looking at we spoke about uh, Jansen and uh, Pinock from uh, Brentford. I think they are mm-hmm. far far mm-hmm. better options. Looking at the fixtures, if somebody somebody were to get in a cheap defender. Uh, in fact, yeah. Brighton defense also. Uh, uh, you know, alongside these two, there are you know there's Dunk and I think there's Duffy. Uh, obviously, there's everybody's favorite uh, Livramento. But I think these uh, uh, three, four uh, cheap options, all you know, in the four point five category, they are far better suited uh, uh, for any team. Uh, you know, as compared to an Arsenal defender at this point in time. I think goalkeeper is the only way uh, I, I would I would get any any Arsenal player any yeah. Arsenal defense player in. Yeah, if you see the even even if you see the season uh, XGC, uh, Brighton is at number eight, and and Arsenal is at around eleven or twelve. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I think Brighton keeper or you know Duffy is is, is uh, they yeah, I mean, they were I think two most uh, owned assets from the defense. For the price, uh, absolutely. Uh, you know Sanchez, yeah, yeah. one of them have them, but Duffy and uh, Dunk. Right. That's an interesting one. Uh, I think I was reading about the Salah today morning. Uh, created a history. Yeah, this, this same thing. Seventy percent ownership. I'm sure twenty percent of the remaining teams are uh, dead teams. So looking at almost everybody <laughs> owning him, <laughs> very strange. So as we speak, it's yeah, sixty nine point one now. So so it's it's. Uh... It's been the highest ever uh, since Riyad. Mah- I, I was not aware that Riyad, Riyad Mahrez was the most owned in 15-16 season. Uh, 68.3 now, Salah 69.1%. It's just crazy. It's just crazy the number of uh, what's happening around him off the field and on the field. So we, basically, we mentioned this because we wanted to spend some time on Salah. You know, on the left-hand side, you can see his uh, game game week performance, uh, you know, so the last nine game weeks. On the right-hand side, uh, we just kind of, you know, took the time out to collate who has been the highest uh, FPL point scorers since the time FPL has been introduced, uh, which was 2002-2003. Uh, and I was surprised that I, I wasn't even aware that Salah is the only one who had scored a uh, triple century in terms of the number of points. So he, he did 3-0-3 in his first season. Uh, in his first season, as in when he when he returned to the Premier League after he, he used to play for Chelsea, uh, second second highest is uh, Suarez, which was two ninety five, and then obviously you know you have the Henrys of the world. Henry has been thrice, uh, so he's leading the chart in terms of uh, number of times he has anybody has topped the FPL points. Uh, you have seen the lows of uh, 2010, 2011 as well, when Nani scored 198 points and he was the highest. So that was also a, f- a funny one. You know, interesting uh, uh, stat here would yeah. be, uh, uh, you know, Salah obviously being classified as a midfielder helps a lot. Uh, you know, you get clean sheet points and you get more points for for the goal. Uh, yeah. But you know, how would he fare uh, if if he was a forward? I think you know, correct. He is a, a forward. Uh, maybe next year we'll probably see him reclassified, but yeah, you uh, never know. You never know. Yeah, yeah. As, as compared to uh, two eighty three from say Ronaldo uh, or two seventy one from an Henri, uh, how does three o three compare? In, in you know, Suarez, I think again was a forward, right? Two ninety five was a phenomenal yeah, yeah, season. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that season was unreal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, twenty thirty goals. Uh, you just add thirty points, right? If you're a midfielder, correct. So. Great. Also, but I think yeah. most, most of the most of the names here are uh, midfielders. So you're right. So if Salah is kind of uh, categorized as uh, forward next season, so that'll be interesting. All right. So the reason we got this up was whether you wanted to talk about Salah captain, whether it should be permanent. Uh, not permanent by means. So we will take it easy. We will not make it permanent for the whole season, but we will take it till the end of the first half, which is game week 19. And the the so this is a comparison of all the teams' fixtures. The teams which we think uh, have players who can be the candidates for captains. Arsenal is there. Chelsea, obviously, uh, you know, you have assets from them. Uh, Leicester, Wadi, 
pool is uh, again uh, sala city has uh, assets united tottenham west ham now if you see this matrix uh, you know let's say the next i think the next game week itself uh, chelsea again newcastle away liverpool brighton home city crystal palace away i think this is the game week where you have more than two options where you can go for in terms of captain uh, whether it, you want it to be foden i don't know whether anybody will ever captain foden um you know kdb owners can think of captaining him uh, it's crystal palace at the end of the day brighton and though brighton and crystal palace defense is kind of similar but both games are away for them yeah. uh, so so that's a tricky one chelsea again it's after what happened in game week 9 i doubt anybody is going to make uh, any chelsea as a captain uh, i'll be surprised if mount is made the captain no uh, any ga- any 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 game week uh, where we see that it can be a tricky one not to captain sala i think west ham away i feel game week 11 i, I was thinking about the same yeah, yeah it's, it's not going it's not an easy game it's not an easy game uh, the way west ham is set up uh, yeah uh, liverpool might win but you know it might be a a goal or two here and there uh but now again, if you see the if you see the other options there are more reds on that game week uh arsenal watford so you know oba or as in are you going to make saka or is her captain ever ever chelsea burnley is now again the only one people might go for defender you know those chilwells of the world or 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 the reese james of the world as a captain because again mount people might make mount i think i i see mount uh, or anybody else as as the maximum one captain for this game week I, i i don't think i will make uh, as of sitting now i don't think i'm going to make sala captain against west ham away no i mean uh, uh, i mean if people have oba uh, he could be a punt and uh, i think that's an interesting thing right if you want to make somebody a captain uh, on a week where you're not captaining sala uh, that person better be a differential so exactly uh, exactly so if it's a big differential like oba you know very less ownership uh, that could be a punt if you really want to catch up uh, and take that risk i think that's a risk worth taking uh, but I think that's the only game. Arsenal home, uh, Liverpool tends to score a lot against Arsenal. Ever- Everton away, a derby again full of goals. Yeah. Tottenham on you know game week 18 probably will be the next one where you'll consider not captaining yeah. him. But again, I don't see too many uh, plum fixtures. West Ham, Antonio if he's in form. I think Norwich home probably that is the next game. But I you know Salah what he's been doing is phenomenal this year. I think 100 points already. Yeah. We've we've been what. not even a fourth uh, one fourth into the season at this yeah, rate he yeah. lost 400 points so uh, it's absolutely very difficult to take the armband uh, off him at this point in time unless he proves otherwise uh, i think how i look at it is anuj i'll probably always start with sala as a default captain and then see that hmm. uh, is anybody else better because here if you put him and consider brighton home uh, you would not even go and look at anybody else uh, yeah. so honestly 11th game week could be worth a punt uh and then maybe 18th but apart from that i i i don't i don't think uh i i probably would not have him off the captain's arm back actually uh the 16th one is everybody's blue uh so chelsea's leads uh, leicester newcastle so you know wardy is a good option there city is city wolves is not going to be united norwich away so that yeah. that Yeah, that could, a, that could be a that could be a good one. Um, so I'm just saying where I'm just saying where Norwich is. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I was saying. So Man United away to Norwich. Uh, you know, again, there could be a case for somebody else to be captain there, but it'll not yeah, yeah. it'll all depend on how United uh, get through this tough set of fixtures right. and how they play right. against right. Arsenal, Crystal Palace. No, you're right. So, so this is a ten game week uh, chart, and I think. easily 5 or 6 easily can be given to sala so without any stress all right uh ex game week fixtures so uh, this is the last section leicester arsenal we we starting with leicester versus arsenal oh i thought it's a arsenal home game okay so it's an away game uh oh, this is this is away arsenal, uh, arsenal arsenal doesn't have a really an, a good track track record against leicester at uh, obviously no, away, yeah. we we don't uh these games tend to be high scoring though uh so that's from my appeal perspective it might work if people have one of those arsenal attackers 
not mm-hmm. to not good for defenders for sure there are goals in it uh, again you know it, it is a good test after those uh, three or four seemingly sort of easier games i think tottenham was a little tricky but then arsenal won that as well uh, so from a arsenal fans perspective it will be interesting to see how we shape up and how we play this game uh, but yeah i mean I, i i'll be happy with the draw uh, to be honest if we able to get a win here uh, you know nothing like it but it'll be an interesting game to watch i i just think that we're a little better suited now with those uh, six mm. five six games on beaten run a little, little more confident uh players know their duties they are well rested uh so interesting game to watch i think this is this is one of those uh, except for spurs of the outside of spurs and manu uh one of the, the tight interesting games to watch i think it will be a good game of football uh, let's start arsenal actually arsenal uh, won last time at uh, at uh, king power I mean, stadium we, we, we do i mean i remember the season that leicester won we were the only team that beat them both home and away so there are there have been wins but there there are yeah. always goals in in leicester arsenal so uh, you know i'm i'm hoping that we don't see too many goals but it's a tight uh, close uh, game but we end up winning so let's see how it shapes up but it'll be a good game yeah it'll be good definitely definitely it'll be fast paced game and uh, and and, and wardy uh, obviously you know he he ends up getting those cheap goals against arsenal all the time but you know with him yeah getting getting old and not as fast as as he used to be uh, yeah, I, yeah. i hope that we be able to cope up with with him this time any other uh, fixture which you're looking forward to i i have a feeling burnley brentford especially uh, will we will be very keen to uh, track this game because of raya's absence and i don't know whether pinock is going to be back uh, i i would be surprised if uh, burnley kind of scores here very likely uh very yeah. likely we'll, we'll have to we'll have to wait and watch i i still brentford has been on and off uh, they've been playing well but they've been on the wrong side of results uh, as well mm, yeah uh, and 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 you know burnley they they need they need points uh, it's a good 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 time to actually play brentford uh, with as you said you know a couple of key players might be missing correct uh, yeah. guemo also may not be there so the fluidity may not be there as as they had in the last few games so you're right it'll be interesting game to uh, yeah. game, game game to watch but we'll see i have I, i have tony in the team so i i hope that he gets on the clean uh, on the score sheet uh, so let's see obviously that, uh, spurs united is a big one big one yeah uh, i think if, i think i think for both both managers it's, it's a huge both of the managers more so for uh, for united i mean they have to bounce back uh, at least in terms of performance if not in terms of the result uh yeah. it's a big game so probably less pressure i think sometimes uh you're down 2-0 at home 3-0 nil at home to say yeah, yeah, yeah. correct team like liverpool it just you know blows everything wide open so yeah it's, it's probably good to have this away from old trafford uh and again spurs uh, have been on and off uh again a good game to watch i think i think it'll be very yeah. interesting it'll be very kg it might be very close game both teams will be happy with a draw uh but i just think uh, somebody will probably nick it so we'll have to see how yeah, it goes for sure i think it's a huge game uh, at the bottom of the table norwich was the leads uh, this game so i have been you know i have been discussing with sushant uh, in a, in a previous pods and i think uh, we have also discussed leads for me is not the same as last year yes there have been in- injuries and all that but if they do not get three points here <laughs> i'm not getting leads as said this season i think i think they are done for this season uh Yes, Bamford is not there, so on and so forth. Yes, but I, I think I have told myself, if Leeds is not winning here, I don't think a draw is uh, really enough for me. Uh, anyways, I'm looking for a reason to just get Rafinha out uh, and then get Tel- <laughs> Telemans in. So it's a big game for Norwich as well. So, so yeah, that'll be a good one. No, it is. I mean, uh, yeah, it is. I mean, Leeds like nine. They're like sixteenth, seventeenth, seventeenth in the yeah, table. Yeah. Uh, nine games. nobody expected that uh, and they don't want to take things for granted i think this is uh, this is a must win game for them as well as norwich obviously but if they lose this they'll be serious serious yeah. pressure uh, uh, on bielsa uh, you know what like correct seven points in 10 games <laughs> it's quite bad yeah, yeah. So, i think villa uh, think... also i you know jaring uh, while yeah. uh, you know, these are teams that have good players they always are the ones who are knocking in those uh, you know top 
five six kind of positions um, important for each of them to prove a point again a, it should be a good game to watch um, yeah. villa home uh, this time away they were doing well i think a, a big one for everton as well after the loss so uh, that'll be that could be a kg affair as well wolves everton and uh, anything i think uh, chelsea game i would be surprised if if newcastle can get a point there uh, i don't think liverpool brighton will be an easy one brighton is brighton uh, they did defeat uh, us last time in at anfield when we lost when we were losing to everyone at anfield uh, but yeah again uh, no fixture no fixture looks dead uh, as always in, in premier league uh, any any bold predictions yeah, I mean, um, uh, I don't know whether Norwich winning at home is a bold prediction. I don't think so. Yeah, yeah I, definitely, definitely. It's a uh, but if I were to look at uh, a truly bold prediction here, I, I would, I would probably say again. Uh, I don't know. I mean, Newcastle, Chelsea. Uh, I, I just think it. it it, it's not a foregone conclusion here that Chelsea will Chelsea mm. will romp the way they Newcastle home Newcastle home is not easy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I think that's a tricky game uh, there, right there. Yeah. Uh, so that could be a little close, closer than people think. Outside of that, I don't think that we're going to see any upset. Leicester Arsenal can go either way. Uh, same with Burnley Brentford. Spurs Manu again, as I said, it could be either way. It could be a draw. But yeah, yeah I mean Newcastle probably trying getting something. At home against Chelsea, uh, that could be interesting. But I would, I would say, uh, Villa, Villa taking three points from West Ham. Uh, yeah, I mean, at home you would kind of, they would expect that going into the game. Uh, but but yeah. let's see. I but think FPL, uh, one guy, one guy. Who, yeah, no, I'm saying from an FPL perspective. Uh, uh, Chelsea game is critical. Uh, City game is critical. Not only to correct, see, correct. see how many who scores, how many points, but who starts. Uh, Liverpool at home, obviously, captain Salah. I think these are three games uh, people looking at from an FPL perspective because I think everybody has a lot of assets. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Within those three teams here, you know, you have Brighton, you have City, you have Liverpool, Chelsea. Uh, so interesting, interesting to see those three games. How any any transfers happen. for you this week? I have one left. Uh, I'm not too sure, uh, uh, you know, who to take a punt on. If if Arsenal were playing an easier uh, game this week, I would have, uh, you know, booted out Ben Rama and would have gotten ESR, who I'll probably do next week. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, I just I'm just tempted to leave him for one more game. Uh, Villa can be leaky. Yeah, uh, yeah, of course. Why not? But, yeah. but that's the that's the only candidate. Uh, if I were to look at one, it could be a late decision. It'll be Benrama out, and I'll probably get uh, one of the budget mids in. It could be ESR. Uh, we've, we've discussed a uh, few names earlier. It could be one of them, but mostly it's going to be an Arsenal midfielder if I have to replace uh, Benrama. All right. Next. For me, I think it'll be, like I said, either be Telemans or uh, feel like taking a punt on Kovacic. Let's see. Yeah, that could be an option as well. Yeah, I didn't consider yeah. that. Yeah, all right. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, it's been a late night for both of us uh, and we will see you next week. Great, Anuj. Thanks again. Uh, thanks for having me. And uh, again, interesting week coming up. Let's see. Let's see how it shapes up. Yeah. All right. Good night. See you. So